Next section from uh, the Stanford Encyclopedia on Descartes and the pineal gland. Um, section 2.2, .2, between the treaties of man and the passions of the soul. The first remarks about the pineal gland, which Descartes published, are to be found in his Dioptrics, um, 1637. The fifth discourse of this book contains the thesis that a certain small gland in the middle of the ventricles is the seat of the sensus communis. Uh, that's the common sense. The general faculty of sense, the universal faculty of sense that combines all the different forms of sensation. In the sixth discourse, we find the following interesting observation on visual perception. Now, quote, now when this picture originating in the eyes thus passes to the inside of our head, it still bears some resemblance to the objects from which it proceeds. As I have amply shown already, however, we must not think that is, it is by means of this resemblance that the picture causes our sensory perception of these objects, as if there were yet other eyes within our brains with which we could perceive it. Okay, so he's aware of the homunculus uh, problem here. Instead, he goes on, we must hold that it is the movements composing these, this picture which acting directly upon our soul insofar as it is united to our body are ordained by nature to make it have such sensations. Okay. Now this is, this is a key phrase our soul insofar as it is united to our body. What is the connection between the soul and the body? How do you get them to actually connect? What is, how does one, how does an idea of the soul flow into the body and how does things from the body flow into the soul or the mind? This is the big question. This remark shows that Descartes tried to avoid the so called homuncular fallacy, which explains perception by assuming there is a little man in the head who perceives the output of the sense organs and obviously leads to an infinite regress. Descartes' short remarks about a small gland in the middle of the brain, which is of a paramount importance, apparently generated a lot of interest. In 1640, Descartes wrote several letters to answer a number of questions that various persons had raised. In these letters, he not only identified the small gland as the uh, conarian or pineal gland, but also added some interesting points to the treaties of man. First, he explained why he regarded it as the principal seat of the rational soul, a point that he had not yet addressed in the treaties of man. He says, my view is that this gland is the principal seat of the soul and the place in which all our thoughts are formed. The reason I believe this is that I cannot find any part of the brain except this, which is not double, not split down the middle, as I was discussing earlier. Since we see only one thing with two eyes and see, hear only one voice with two ears, and in short, have never more than one thought at a time, it must necessarily be the case that the impressions which enter by two eyes or by two ears and so on, unite with each other in some part of the body before being considered by the soul. Now it is impossible to find any such place in the whole head except this gland. Moreover, it is situated in the most suitable possible place for this person, purpose in the middle of all the concavities. And it is supported and surrounded by the little branches of the cart carotid arteries which bring the spirits into the brain. Okay, in quote. And as he wrote that wrote later that year, quote, since it is the only solid part in the whole brain which is single, it must necessarily be the seat of the common sense, in other words, of thought and consequently of the soul, for one cannot be separated from the other. The only alternative is to say that the soul is not joined immediately to any solid part of the body, 
but only to the animal spirits which are in its concavities and which enter it and leave it continually like the water of river. That would certainly be thought too absurd. Another important property of the pineal gland in Descartes' eyes is that it is small, light, and easily movable. The pituitary gland is, though small, undivided and located in the middle, not the seat of the soul because it is outside the brain and entirely immobile. The prosthesis vermiformis of the cerebellum, as Descartes called the appendage, which Galen had discussed, is not a suitable candidate because it is divisible into two halves. Okay. A second interesting addition to the Treatise of Man that Descartes made in these letters concerns memory. Descartes now wrote that memories may not only be stored in the hemispheres, but also in the pineal gland and in the muscles. Apart from this, there is also another kind of memory, entirely intellectual, which depends on the soul alone. Descartes' thesis that the pineal gland is the seat of the census communist is soon defended by others. The medical student Jean Cousin defended it in Paris in January 1641. And, and the professor of the theoretical of theoretical me medicine, Regius, defended it in Utrecht in June 1641. Mersin described the reaction of Cosin's audience in a letter to Descartes, but this letter never reached its destination and is now lost. Okay. 